audio's good. Now? Mm -hmm. Everyone's, they can hear us and see us. So it's working. It's working. Good. Okay. Stacy confirmed that she can hear it. All right.
All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, for this wonderful opportunity to talk live with the California Guitar Trio, plus a very special guest, Fabio Matino. Uh, we see Paul in the upper right. Um, hi, Paul. How are you today? Hello. I'm good. I've got my uh, Snake Word Music shirt on. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate the pride. <laughs> All right, and then we've got Fabio uh, on the lower right. Fabio, say hi. 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 All right, and you are out in Rome or Milan? Milano. Milano. Okay, Milan, Italy. Thank you for joining us uh, pretty late in the evening. I appreciate it. Thank you. And then we've got Bert hailing from Florida. Bert, please uh, say hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. All right, and it looks like we've got about 64 people here right now, which is great. Uh, that's really excellent, and I think it's a testimony to your uh, fan base and their dedication. So uh, thanks for getting the word out, everyone. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Hideo Moria. Hello, Hideo. Hello, Hello Anthony. How, How are you? you? Okay. Excellent. And you're over on the East Coast somewhere, right? Oh, yes. i near the Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. Yeah. All right. Cool. And I am out in Phoenix. And uh, if you if you guys are able, uh, you're welcome to pull up the YouTube, uh, the video itself, and you can see the live chat, or I will just uh, bring questions up. But uh, it's up to you. So thank you again to everyone who's joining us. Uh, if you joined early, um, then you would have heard the first two tracks of this excellent new album called Elegy. So um, I particularly love the first track, Halis <laughs> uh, Who can help? Halitasilmad. Oh, is that how you say it? <laughs> Halitasilmad. Okay. So, uh, Paul, do you uh, do you want to share kind of the story behind that track? Yes, uh, uh, that track is written by an Estonian composer, Argo Valls, and. The, the backstory on that is my wife, Stacy, who's here with me today listening, she was driving uh, in Los Angeles in her car and on KCRW, one of the, the main stations that we like to listen to here in LA and that also big supporters of CGT in the early days, she heard this track and came home and was excited about it and said, listen to this, this sounds like something that's right down your guy's alley. This sounds like something that uh, could somehow, she, she didn't know at that point, she just liked it and thought it sounded like our style of music. And so I checked into it uh, further and I bought the albums from Argo Valls. And it turns out that Argo Valls is a, a friend of ours from guitar, uh, he, uh, is friends with a, a guy named Robert Jurgendahl that's one of our guitar craft friends. And they played together uh, in Estonia. And so the the more I listened to that track, uh, the, we uh, I, I had the idea that we could do something with the group together. And Hideo helped make the arrangement for this one. So Argo Ball sent us the score for it, but Hideo, and also some help from Bert too, but Hideo was the first one to really take a look at all the parts and see how we might arrange it as a, a group. And it, it went through several mutations over time. We initially did a recording with our friends from Tiny Orchestral Moments in Seattle, um, and then ended up deciding we wanted to do the, uh, a, a new recording just with CGT. And that was pretty good but it wasn't quite enough. So we invited Fabio to contribute some electric guitar on it. So there's a few layers of Fabio electric guitar playing on that one too. I really love that track. Um, in fact, as soon as I heard it, right after I purchased the album, which everyone should purchase this album, uh, and you, it's pay what you want right now on Bandcamp. So you can just go to cgtrio.com and then there's a link to the to, to the purchase page. But go purchase it and spend a lot of money uh, on this because this album is awesome. Um, you know, I've been buying a lot of albums lately, which is uncharacteristic for me. Uh, 
just because there's so much music to listen to at all times, you know, it gets a little overwhelming, but I immediately regretted only paying $10 for this record. So I need to, <laughs> I, I will gift, uh, I will gift someone on this, um, stream, a copy, uh, where I will pay additional money for it. I don't know how we'll make that work, but we will. So somebody just buy the album or ask me to buy it for them, um, in the stream chat. Uh, anyway, so Fabio, Thank you. yes, it, it is, it is really, I mean, this is excellent. This album to me is your best album. Um, it's, it's very contemplative. It sounds fantastic. Uh, the mix is great. Everything, it, the songs are really, um, I feel like they're just deeper. I mean, there are, there's, there's get back and there's the surf, uh, song on there. And, uh, there's, you know, it's re definitely, it captures the CGT live experience pretty well, but a whole lot of these songs are really deep, meaningful um, recordings, and it reminds me a lot of the work that Bert and Fabio have done uh, with their albums of uh, Thomas de Hartmann and and uh, Gurdjieff music. Um, so I don't know if you have, oops, sorry, I don't know if you have any sort of insights there, Bert or Fabio, into how any of that stuff carried into this these performances or any background stories from anyone about how this was recorded i know it was on the road so share anything <laughs> well it, it's, it's for me it's a very different project but the thing that's uh, that's common with fabio's and and our music is that it's mostly all music written by other composers and uh, we delved really deep and i think uh, one of one of my favorite tunes on there is the Radiohead tune, and uh, that's also another arrangement that Hideo came up with. And with the the circulation style playing with the trio, it's really featured on this album, and it is, I think, one of the strong points. And it's something that always draws the audience in when we play live. Is the circulation? You can just feel it when we play circulations. People are are, are just something comes back at us from the audience. It's very amazing. And I think uh, there's a lot of pieces in there that feature the circulation style. And, and I think that helps uh, what you mentioned about the album. Uh, I don't feel that much in common, but maybe Fabio, Fabio has something to say about that. Well, uh, I mixed, mixed both albums. So yes. maybe, maybe there and maybe a similarity of uh, the way uh, the mixing uh, was made and uh, of course the sound that uh, um, as a result of all the all this work and uh, i must have, uh, i must say that it's very easy to work with the cgt because uh, they are I mean, th there were not, uh, it was maybe because we, we both uh, came from, uh, from the same background. So we know uh, how we would like our guitar tone uh, and, uh, but uh, the approach was uh, of, of, for this album was quite uh, um, simple. We, they just recorded with uh, good mics and uh, and basically I, I just have to make it uh, sound as best as I can. And uh, I really like how it, uh, how it sound because it feel quite natural to me and uh, feel like true. It, yeah, Very that I think is the word for this album. True, uh, it feels like you're you're in the room listening to these guys playing about three to five feet away from you. There, there's yeah. not a lot of uh, reverb. There's not a lot of ambience, or uh, there's not a lot of like effects like on some of the older albums. Uh, the guitars are very true to their actual sound, and it, it, I feel like you can hear the bodies of the guitar, and you can hear the the clothes rubbing on the <laughs> on the guitar and the fingers moving and the string sounds like I just love how as a guitarist myself who really appreciates a good acoustic 
recording, I really love the way this album sounds and projects. Uh, we recorded the the whole... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Helium. Okay. Uh, from the beginning uh, of this recording project, uh, Fabio helped us uh, with uh, which gear we use. And, uh, you know, it's not an expensive one, but uh, we uh, use a moderate, but sounds good. Also, I, myself and Fabio using a studio one, the software for the recording. So some uh, common thing is there. So it's from the beginning, his help is a lot. Well, you guys did a great well, job. Yeah. You really did. It sounds excellent. Yeah. I would like to add that we, I think that we really found a nice way to work. And uh, it was uh, easy also because uh, Hideo, uh, as I just said, he was using the same software that I used. So he, we basically, uh, he ex we exchanged at the beginning the project, uh, the whole project. So I already had all the tracks and, uh, and that made the process uh, more fast, quick, Mm -hmm. And even if there were some correction to do, was uh, was very straightforward, and uh, it was really nice. That's great. Basically, as, as it should be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's very uncommon. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play another track. Um, it's great to hear you guys talk about this album, but the, the music is so good. I just want to share as much of it as we can on this stream. Um, the track I want to play next is by Bert, and it's the first part of the Gaudela trilogy. Uh, Bert, do you want to provide just a little bit of background on, on this set of pieces? Yeah, uh, so they were commissioned by the uh, promoter of the festival in Gauvea, a yearly festival that we were invited to this year. And uh, he gets funds by the city of Gaudea and uh, they he, he wanted us to, to uh, compose something that was uh, dedicated to their city, which they're so proud of. So we went to work, all three of us, and we each came up with some ideas. And then we, we got together uh, just like a month or two ago at the end of our tour in Canada and worked exclusively on those three pieces because that was the only, that was the only thing that was still missing on the album. And uh, each day we worked on uh, refining my piece, Paul's piece, and Hideo's piece. And and at the end, the, the last day, we just kept recording them. And they are basically it was a, a really a collaboration. I couldn't have come up with this piece. Just I can't say I wrote this piece, but. Maybe the main idea or the beginning of the beginning ideas were mine, and then we all three collaborated on filling in parts. And even I remember the last day I came up with still a riff for the end. And I remember he, uh, Paul's playing a, an Ebo solo in there that was also like a last minute decision because we were thinking, shall we send this off to uh, another special guest to play on top? It was like, but no, Paul, play your Ebo. And uh, Paul did the. the it went very fast. It was like one take, right, Paul? Was it one take or two takes? You did. Um, I I did layer takes, and we ended yes. up using yeah. all all of them. <laughs> yes, but you did it. You did it like in ten minutes. Uh, yeah. You know, it was very fast. Uh, so I just for the the listeners here on the stream, the last section of the song where Paul's Ebo solo is, is so beautiful. I almost started crying when I first heard it. And if anyone knows me personally, I've probably shared that my wife has called me an emotional monolith <laughs> or impenetrable monolith. I'm not a very emotional person, but something about this, th that last section of this song really hit me, um, hit me hard and it is incredibly beautiful. So please pay attention to, um, to the very chilling you know, last minute or so of the song. So here we go.
truly beautiful, you guys. Something to be proud of. Amazing piece of music. Uh, so, yes, thank you for, <laughs> for making it really just stunningly beautiful. I'd like to go through some of the um, fan-submitted questions. So, um, let's see. Are you guys able to see any of the YouTube chat by any, by any chance? Uh, Jim Tabory asked, when might we expect to hear songs from Elegy on Spotify and Pandora? Uh, we're doing this album release in stages. So the first stage was just the digital download on Bandcamp. And then in June, we will release uh, on CD for those people who still buy CDs. And then in July, July 1st, we'll be submitted to all the streaming platforms. Yeah, so um, I'm going to avoid going on my soapbox about this, but uh, I anyone who's watched the interviews uh, on this site knows that streaming is a problem in the industry. And um, an artist named Sarah Groves that I interviewed said, um, all that matters is the pre-release because once your album's released, it's free. <laughs> and the California Guitar Trio, uh, contrary to perhaps popular opinion, can't actually survive on uh, no salary or no revenue. So, <laughs> so I'm really glad that you guys are releasing this as a pay what you want and that you're doing this in stages. I think that's a really wise way of releasing this record. Uh, and I know Paul, you've been fairly transparent about, um, about the finances of streaming and those kinds of things when you and I have talked before on the site and elsewhere. Uh, how's the response been for this pay what you want campaign? It's been surprisingly amazing. In fact, much better than we anticipated because, you know, we didn't really know what was going to happen now. It, we thought maybe people were already tired of, uh, you know, seeing things online by now and, you know, staying at home and stuff. But it was, it's been really unexpectedly great. And people have been supportive. You know, there were a lot of people that have been paying just $1 or $3 for it. And that's fine. If that works for them, that's totally okay. That's more but than you would have been... made streaming it, you know, thousands yes. of times. <laughs> that's right. Yes. So, uh, and then uh, there have been a lot of people who've been paying uh, 20 and 50 and 100. You know, uh, Jim Tabory, who just asked that question, he, he paid $100 for it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. That's awesome. <laughs> Cool. Uh, and the, the response has been great. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, and again, the offer stands to, uh, to someone who speaks up in the, in the stream chat. I will buy uh, one more copy because I feel I underpaid for this record and I want someone else to have it who doesn't already. Um, let's see. Someone asked, what are your thoughts on Tosin Abasi? Does everyone even know who Tosin is? Fabio does. Okay, so <laughs> uh, let's skip that question because I don't want to put anyone in an awkward I, position. I've, I've heard of him, but I'm, I'm not familiar with his music. So, Okay, it's pretty heavy. It's like really technical, heavy music. And doesn't he play one of those multi-string guitars? Yep, yep, he plays an eight-string, uh, multi-scale. Yeah. I've heard a little bit, yes. Yep. And, and what I heard was amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a giant element. Yes. <laughs> Uh, how did you guys select the songs to be included on this album? Uh, Brian White asks. Bert, do you want to start with that one? Well, you know, they, they have to resonate with at least with one of us. Usually it's one of us first that brings in the idea. Uh, or and, and then if it resonates with the other two guys, then it's in. It's always kind of a... And it's a no-brainer. It's we try something. Some things don't work, but in in general, these pieces, somebody is excited about it. One of the, one of the three of us is excited about it, and it will make the other two excited as well. Uh, yeah, and and each piece yeah. has a different story of, about it. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, we were talking. Bert mentioned the daydreaming 
uh, piece. And that one had several different aspects, that, uh, things that happened behind it. Uh, yes. So uh, firstly, I'm a huge Radiohead fan. And I when that, that latest album called Moonshake Pool came out, that was one of my favorite tracks. And then a, a friend of ours named Colin Landigwin, uh, he's a guitar craft friend of ours that had, has unexpectedly passed away last year. But he, just a few months before he passed away, he had made an arrangement of it and sent it to us. And uh, I, we started to take a look at it. And then again, Hideo took the reins on that one. And he took Colin's arrangement and rearranged it for a CGT and in, uh, including the circulation parts that we were talking about. So, uh, and then we started playing that one live and it, uh, I know you heard us play that live at the, the Museum of-, of uh, Musical Instrument uh, Museum. Music, yes, Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix. And so that became a favorite to play live. And so it, it just, it translated really well to the album. And I, I think so we he, released a video of that too, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah. And so each each song has a, a story behind it, uh, like that, of the details. Cool. Hideo, here's a question for you. Uh, not that the person yeah. asked di you directly, but uh, I'm going to ask you directly. Uh, Mr. Pat Courtney asks, which of the songs from Elegy are you particularly looking forward to performing live? Particularly to perform? Mm-hmm. Uh... I think my piece because we never played in audience and it's quite hard, you know. In part of your Gaudea uh, trilogy? Oh, yeah, totally. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, um, let's listen to that one later. I wanted to cue up um, the droning circulation. A couple people have already asked about that. Um, so let's take a listen and then we'll talk about the track after that.
That is a beautiful track uh, featuring something called Circulation. And uh, Rich Hilton, who is a, an amazing musician, uh, he commented on the hocketing uh, of that track. So I'm curious, do, are, are you any of you familiar with hocketing? Yeah, Paul? Is there a difference between circulation and hocketing? I think there's a similarity, but the, uh, circulation is the name that Robert Fripp gave it. Uh, and that's something that we learned on the guitar craft courses from Robert Fripp that we, uh, the three of us met when, you know, back in 1988, uh, studying with Robert and circulation was a very important part of what we were doing on the, these guitar craft courses because it, it also has to do with the intent and maybe that's one of the, the differences is that we're not uh, just playing the note in succession but we're actually passing our notes from one to another so the notes are circulating uh, amongst the, the group so in uh, that piece is uh, very obvious that, that each of us playing one note in, in succession. And that's a composition written by a composer from Quebec named Claude Laflamme. And we met him the last time we performed in Quebec City. And he, we get lots of people saying, oh, please, you know, play our piece or, you know, a lot, we get lots of suggestions, but for somehow we made a connection with uh, cloud and we listened to his piece and uh, had this idea to do play it in circulation form and we recorded it in one of the Airbnb houses I think that one was recorded in Bryn Mawr Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania yes. near Hideo's place and then we sent our recorded tracks to Tony Levin who is just did a spectacular overdub part that it which is not easy because we're not playing really uh, perfectly in time we're slowing down and speeding up and Tony was ab able to adapt his part to that uh, piece and we just on uh, Friday we released a video of that track that was done by a, a guitar craft friend of ours named Howard Snyder who's a expert nature photographer and he did some incredible droning footage and made a, this video that goes along with that piece that fits perfectly. And that video is on your YouTube channel? Do you have a YouTube channel? Is that where they find oh, yes. it? Yes, and okay. on our Facebook page. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, you know, as I've yeah. listened to that and some of your other circulation pieces, like the Bach pieces, um, how do you, do you guys write out the sheet music and then you learn each part or do you sit in a room together and kind of share the same score and, you know, assign notes? Like how, how do you do that? Cause I listened to this piece thinking this is another one of those ridiculous, how, how do they do those, you know, how do they do that kind of moments? Uh, so I'm curious, how do you guys assign parts and how do you learn them? And is there sheet music involved? Uh, I made a tab for the CGT. I arranged it as a circulation, and uh, each part, you know, Paul and Bart and myself, there's a three part. And uh, also there's some bass part, which is a very simple one. And Tony Levin just played uh, just like as he feels. So kind of uh, it's his improvisation on top of the, our circulation. So do you hand out um, kind of all three parts at once so everyone can hear the whole thing together and then then you kind of just learn your part? Uh, no, there's a recording from uh, recording from his uh, album. So we listened his playing and then kind of uh, imitating how he plays. So every two bars, he kind of slow it down which you can hear kind of in the breathing in the music. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah, Claude, Claude plays this on solo guitar, on acoustic guitar. Oh, okay. So that's the recording in this. And do you, do you guys compose pieces uh, that way, kind of 
Do, do you ever have pieces that come out of a circulated improvisation? Uh, in the past, we have done circulation, improvised circulation pieces. In fact, on our album Andromeda, there are several mm -hmm. circulation, uh, uh, improvised circulated pieces, pieces that came out of improvised circulations. Excellent. And on the on the guitar craft courses, there's a lots of improvised circulations <laughs> happening, improvised and composed. Yeah. Or if you just happen to be walking through Seattle, you're going to bump into or at least see Steve Ball's like gr a glowing neon <laughs> atmosphere and you will be attracted to it like a bug towards light and you will end up circulating mm -hmm. with the guitar whether you play or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so earlier um hideo mentioned he's most looking forward to playing his part of the gaudia trilogy called mondego rio da esperanza uh, what does that mean and uh, how did that that piece come about uh, Mondigo is the river from uh, Gobea into the Porto, I think. The big river and uh, the Rio, uh, Rio de uh, Esperanca is uh, like a hope mm. of the river of the hope, which in you know, Gobea into the you know, ocean, I've, I felt like something, you know, there's some uh, hope in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I wrote piece. It's basically three part. One, uh, well, first part and the uh, first part is kind of you know adventure, and then uh, in a later kind of uh, hope is in uh, in in the piece and in a later part. Wonderful. Kind of part. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's take a listen.
I would be remiss if I did not bring up that that last the section of hope uh, has little hints of in the court of the Crimson King and maybe some lizard. There's not a lot of King Crimson in CGT music, but in that piece, I thought there's definitely some classic King Crimson in there. <laughs> it's a really great piece. Uh, very nice job, Hideo. Wonderful composition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so there's a bunch of questions coming in, and a lot of people are um, pretty excited and about I, this. I, I'm looking at uh, the, the questions, too, and I, uh, I saw that, uh, let's see, Patrick Courtney was asking about the album cover. Yes. Which, in which uh, I'm happy to say is all made from my photography work. And it's a design by Gary Banfield from Tour Bus Live, who have helped us with our last few CD covers. But it, it's kind of a collage of different photographs. The, the mountains on the bottom come from San Jacinto, uh, which is uh, out near the Palm Desert here. Um, the, uh, the trees come from a uh, winter scene in Minnesota, and the moon actually c comes from my balcony of just a couple weeks ago, maybe uh, three weeks ago, just when things started to really clear up here with the less traffic, I was able to get this really clear shot of the moon. And Gary found this way to uh, create this design, this collage of, of all the, the photographs together. So it's really, you, Gary. yeah, it's a wonderful cover. And for those who don't know, Paul is a really great photographer. Uh, and as much as I enjoy the CGT music, I almost as much enjoy Paul's Facebook and Instagram stream when they're on tour <laughs> because uh, the la I think the last tour, the last U.S. tour, you went through Yellowstone, took some amazing photographs, uh, and I believe you're selling your photographs on, uh, was it metallic ink printed, um, you know, sheets? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh, this uh, expert printmaker, John Lybrook is creating the, the, these amazing prints. In fact, on the wall behind me, you can see two of them there. That, um, he he's a, does these prints using the old Italian style of printing, intaglio, maybe Fabio can help me pronounce that correctly, intaglio style printing from like 100 years ago, that where they, they actually do an etching, the, the, the image is etched onto metal and then from the metal, they print it on the special paper. It's really cool. I mean, uh, your photos are great. And uh, where, if anyone wants to check them out, where do they go find them? There's, the, uh, you can find the, the, the just, if you do a search for Paul Richards photography, you're gonna find it. It's on my, my Facebook page. Okay. Someone else asked if you have any idea when you would be uh, touring again or if you have future plans with the Montreal Guitar Trio. Um, maybe you could discuss that a little bit as well as your recent releases with them. Well, that, I think uh, Dave Dickens was one of the ones who asked that original question. So hi, Dave. And actually, there's so many friends here, I couldn't possibly say hello to everybody. But, and uh, so, as far as when we are going to tour again, we don't really know. Um, everything keeps getting pushed back. So we're originally we were try, trying to be hopeful that we could tour again this fall because if you look on our website, we have a whole uh, busy schedule this fall. But at this point, it looks like that that may not happen. Mm. You know, we don't know when live concerts are going to happen again which is really tough because that's the main thing that the three of us do i mean we we enjoy you know the recording and making albums and stuff but this the live playing is our the main thing that we've been doing for 29 years now so that's a, a rough one to have to not be able to do that now so yeah. it's, but it's, it's also an opportunity to do other things i mean like this right now what we're doing today right right yeah, maybe I want to inter interfere here for a second too. Yes. This, this album too, I think the, one of the reasons why this album is so strong is also maybe there was kind of a 
a premonition of what's what's coming you know with with the uh, the pandemic you know and we we finished the album like a day or two before everything started to shut down here in mm. the US i remember flying back from canada after the recordings and we were all already wearing masks and uh, uh, you know when, once i got home everything got shut down so it felt like maybe the, the music kind of uh, there's something that people can connect with that was was in this music like a sense of urgency was throughout you know the recording too like you know, we're gonna do this you know and especially the last recording we did about all the r and did we do four recording sessions or three i forgot four four yes mm -hmm. starting in the two in pennsylvania yes Oh. And in it the started, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yes, go ahead, Hideo. Okay. We started in Los Angeles. Well, before oh, yeah. well, we did a uh, session in uh, Seattle with a Seattle mm -hmm. group. The Elegy is the very first one we recorded. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to the Los Angeles, Airbnb, and then Brima, Pennsylvania, Chicago mm -hmm. in December and then Montreal in February. All during the uh, the winter in the Midwest and Northeast, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I bet that colored the feeling of these recordings as well. Somebody had asked um, if there are any associations with the between the cities where you recorded these songs and the songs themselves. It's probably inescapable, but uh, anyone feel free to oh, chime oh, for in for sure yeah yeah i mean these the the three original pieces that we recorded were the three that were we recorded in the house in montreal and it had been snowing like crazy there there was like three feet of snow outside and it was freezing cold and so being there in that environment certainly had a, an influence on us but you know you had mentioned earlier about the the intimate sound of the album. And a lot of that came from turning these living rooms at the Airbnb houses into recording studios. So it really does sound like you're there in that living room with us when we were recording those pieces. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Uh, someone, I think it was Steve Ball had asked Fabio, what, what, do you, uh, what software do you use to edit your videos? And um, that's not necessarily relevant to the discussion, but I did want to bring up that you are a multi-talented, uh, you, you do a lot of stuff that people may not realize. You have toured with Bert. Uh, you guys have several CDs together. You are an incredible guitarist. You do video editing. You're helping me troubleshoot uh, video streaming before we got started. Um, <laughs> so uh, Fabio, did you... Um, it, can you talk a little about your response to this music and um, maybe through s some of the tools you use, you know, for some of the tech nerds like me uh, and others who are on the stream? Okay. Uh, I didn't understand. Steve was talking about the video. Uh, which video? Uh, well, there was the... Didn't you guys do a Get Back video? The get, get Back, yeah. Get, get, yeah, Fabio get. did the Get Back. Well, uh to reply to Steve, uh, well, hello, Steve. Um, is uh, I used Premiere, uh, Premiere Pro, and uh, that was an idea we came up together uh, to have uh, everybody of them uh, a record of each of the, their parts, and I just put it together and, uh, and uh, it was uh, we take it we took advantage of a very nice background in uh, Hideo's house he has a beautiful cherry tree and uh, so uh, I'm sure that Hideo could talk more ex uh, extensively <laughs> about that but uh, it it actually uh, fit to me uh, a lot because uh, as Ideo was suggesting uh, during an email and this is really something that he struck with me is uh, that 
uh, cherry blossom is a message of hope and uh, especially in this uh, in this uh, period this is what is needed and uh, so also the get back it could be seen as a let's get back to the where you are yes and to the to the to our normal life of of what we call we used to call normal <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely i think it's great and uh for for those who also may not know fabio has some excellent music he has a a new record uh which is called simple music for difficult people volume two i believe um, three. it's volume three yes so this is the third volume of simple music for difficult people uh, i think he wrote that title for me when i read it the first time <laughs> but i'm sure it's targeted at many of us <laughs> uh but before we before we go um i, I do want to play one more song and and have one more plug of everything but um it is it, we are acknowledging we're in this kind of weird period of the pandemic and um I know that Fabio and Bert are giving guitar lessons. So if anyone is interested on the stream, you know, find them on Facebook, reach out to them. Extremely affordable for incredibly talented guitarists. Paul and Hideo, I don't know if you're doing anything similar, uh, but you know, feel free to chime in if you are. <laughs> Otherwise, just reach out to Bert and, and Fabio on Facebook. Yeah, I've been working on my photography work. And then also one of the things I've been doing here at, at home is I actually tuned two of my guitars in uh, old standard tuning and have been learning songs that I never learned before that I always wanted to learn. I've been playing 30 years in this guitar craft fifth tuning and now I'm learning Beatles songs in <laughs> standard tuning, which I, <laughs> I didn't do before. <laughs> So most the thing that most, you know, most guitarists end up doing, you end up doing 30 years into your career. <laughs> yeah. But using the techniques that I learned. Yeah, yeah. Robert and everybody. And, but I also want to make sure we acknowledge that today is Mother's Day and say you know, happy Mother's Day to all yes. the mothers out yes. there. And uh, make sure, I'm sure there's a few on in the audience here today too, yes. so. Yes, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. And uh, happy birthday, Eileen Bunch. It's her birthday and she's in the stream. Oh, happy birthday, Eileen. Yes. All right, so let's close um, Let's close with this song, Cavatina. And let's play it for Eileen's birthday. And uh, Paul, what's the name of your dog there? This is Jasper. Hi, Jasper. Hi, Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, happy birthday, Eileen. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Please go to cgtrio.com. You see the URL in the lower right. And pay what you want for this new album. It is truly excellent. Please throw as much money as you can uh, their way. And, um, and again, thank you to the California Guitar Trio for, and Fabio for joining us today. It's really a pleasure to listen to your wonderful music and to hear uh, you know, your thoughts on some of these songs. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this, Anthony. We always enjoy seeing you and hope to see you at the, the museum again at yes. the, the next time CGT gets to play there. Absolutely. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. And, and thanks to everybody for thank joining you. us. Thanks thank for you. the questions. I'm sorry we couldn't answer everybody's question. Maybe we can do it online. <laughs>